Our lecture note for today is general education, English. Under the topic, speech and oral communication. This review lesson will give you the following competency. 1. To use English accurately, meaningfully, and appropriately in oral discourse. Which will be divided into three categories. A. Grammar. B. English phonology. C. Oral communications and language functions. Let us start with grammar. A. The parts of speech. The parts of speech fall into two categories. 1. The content words, also called form classes because they are best identified by form rather than by functions, are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, and 2. The structure words, most of which do carry some meaning, but which also serve to form a structural framework, so that words can fit into sentences. A. Aspect and tenses of verb Tense Simple present Verb plus s slash es, singular subject Verb, base form, plural subject Meaning Expresses events or situations that exist always, usually, and habitually Examples A. It snows in Alaska B. Edward and Kyle watch television every day Tense Simple past, verb plus d slash ed Meaning An action happened at one particular time in the past It began and ended at a specific time in the past Examples A. It snowed in Alaska last year B. Edward and Kyle watched television last night After tenses, let us proceed to aspect First is progressive, also called continuous. The progressive aspects give the idea that an action is in progress during a particular time. It begins before, is in progress during, and continues after another time or action. 1. Present progressive, am slash is slash r and verb ing. An action began in the past, is in progress at the at the present time, and probably will continue. Example. A. Beth is sleeping right now. 2. Past progressive, was slash were and verb ing. An action began before and was in progress at a particular time in the past. Example. Beth was sleeping when I arrived. 3. Future progressive, will slash shall and be and verb ing. An action will begin before another action, and it will be in progress at a particular time in the future. Example. Beth will be sleeping when we arrive. But take note. The use of will versus be going to. To express a prediction, use either will or be going to. To express a prior plan, use only be going to. To express willingness, use only will. Examples. 1. According to the weather report, it will be cloudy tomorrow. According to the weather report, it is going to be cloudy tomorrow. This example expresses a prediction. 2. Why did you buy this paint? I am going to paint my bedroom tomorrow. This example expresses a prior plan. 3. I will do it for you. This example expresses willingness. The second aspect is perfect. The perfect aspects all give the idea that one thing happened before another time or event. 1. Present perfect, has slash have and verb n, past participle. An action happened some time before, now at an unspecified time in the past. The exact time is not important. Adverbs like ever, never, already, yet, still, and just are frequently used with the present perfect. A situation that began in the past and continues to the present, usually used with for or since. Examples A. Gary has already eaten. B. I have been here since 7 o'clock. C. I have known him for many years. Note the difference between since and for. For is use plus a duration of time. Since is use plus a particular time. 2. Past perfect, had plus verb n, past participle. 
An action was completely finished before another activity or time in the past. Example. Gary had already eaten when his friend arrived. 3. Future perfect, will slash shall plus have plus verb n, past participle. An action will be completely finished before another time in the future. Example. Gary will already have eaten when his friend arrives. The third aspect is perfect progressive. The perfect progressive aspects give the idea that one event is in progress immediately before, up to, until another time or event. 1. Present perfect progressive, has slash have plus been plus verb ing. An event is in progress. It happened before now up to now. Example. A. Catherine has been delivering the speech for 30 minutes now. 2. Past perfect progressive, had, plus, been, plus, verb ing. Emphasizes the duration of an activity, that was in progress before another activity, or time in the past. Example. Catherine had been delivering the speech for 30 minutes before the president arrived. 3. Future perfect progressive, will have, plus been, plus verb ing. An event is in progress. It happened before another event in the future and will last for a particular period of time. Example. Catherine will have been delivering the speech for 30 minutes by the time the president arrives. Next is the concept of state of verbs. State of verbs describe states, conditions, or situations that exist. When verbs have state of meanings, they are usually not used in progressive tenses. Example. This food tastes good. I like it very much. You have to take note that, tastes and like, both describe a state that exists, therefore, it is incorrect to say this food is tasting good. I am liking it very much. Here is a list of common state of verbs. Common state of verbs for mental state. No, understand, recognize, realize, believe, need, suppose, desire, feel. Common state of verbs for emotional state. Love, like, appreciate, please, prefer, hate, dislike, fear, envy, mind, care, Astonish, surprise. Common state of verbs for possession. Possess, have, own, belong. Common state of verbs for sense perceptions. Taste, smell, hear, feel, see. Other existing states. Seem, look, appear, sound, resemble, look like, cost, o, equal, matter. Aside from state of verbs, we also have dynamic verbs. Sometimes referred to as action verbs. Dynamic verbs express a wide range of actions, which may be physical, mental, or perceptual, as opposed to a state of verb which purely expresses a state, in which there is no obvious action. Some examples of dynamic verbs are eat, drink, go, type, read, write, listen, speak, watch, say, grow, melt, work, sleep, cook, talk, etc. Now let us move on to subject-verb agreement. The following are the rules to follow in subject-verb agreement. Rule 1, a compound subject joined by or, or, nor requires a singular verb if each part is singular, if the parts differ in number or person, the verb agrees with the subject nearer to it. Examples. My aunt or my uncle is arriving by train today. The book or the magazines are on the shelf. Rule 2, two singular subjects connected by either or or neither nor require a singular verb, but when a singular and plural subject are connected, use a plural verb. Examples. Either John or Susan is available. Neither the teacher nor the principal is coming. Either the house or the cars are for sale. Neither Jenny nor the others are available. Rule 3, when one of your two subjects is I, put it second and follow it with the singular verb am. Example, neither she nor I am going to the festival. Rule 4, compound subjects joined by and require a plural verb, 
but when the parts refer to the same person, or have some other close relation, they take a singular verb. Also, if the parts of the compound subject are modified by each, or no, a singular verb is required. Examples Her professor and thesis advisor is here. Every branch and twig was covered with dust. No one is here. Rule 5, sometimes the subject is separated from the verb, by words such as along with, as well as, besides, or not. Ignore these expressions, when determining whether to use a singular or plural verb. Examples The politician, along with the newsman, is expected shortly. Excitement, as well as nervousness, is the cause of her shaking. Rule 6, the indefinite pronouns each, everyone, one, everybody, anyone, anybody, someone, and somebody are singular and require singular verbs. Do not be misled by what follows of. Examples. Each of the girls sings well. Every one of participating teams is pleased about the judging. Note. Everyone is one word when it means everybody. Everyone is two words when the meaning is each one. Every one of the items on sale is gone. Rule 7, with words that indicate portions percent, fraction, part, majority, some, all, none, remainder, etc. Look at the noun in your a phrase, object of the preposition, to determine whether to use a singular or plural verb. If the object of the preposition is singular, use a singular verb. If the object of the preposition is plural, use a plural verb. Examples 50% of the pie has disappeared. 50% of the pies have disappeared. All of the pie is gone. All of the pies are gone. Some of the pie is missing. Some of the pies are missing. Rule 8, when either and neither are subjects, they always take singular verbs. Examples. Neither of them is available to speak right now. Either of us is capable of doing the job. Rule 9, the words here and there have generally been labeled as adverbs, even though they indicate place. In sentences beginning with here or there, the subject follows the verb. Examples There are four hurdles to jump. There is a high hurdle to jump. There sits the guest of honor. Here sleeps my baby brother. Rule 10, use a singular verb with sums of money or periods of time. Examples $10 is a high price to pay. Five years is the maximum sentence for that offense. Rule 11, sometimes the pronoun who, that, or which is the subject of the verb in the middle of the sentence. The pronouns who, that, and which become singular or plural according to the noun, directly in front of them. So if that noun is singular, use a singular verb. If it is plural, use a plural verb. Examples Charlene is the scientist who writes the reports. In the above example, the word in front of who, is scientist, which is singular. Therefore, the verb writes is singular. He is one of the men who do the work. In this example, men preceding who, is plural. The verb do is likewise plural. Rule 12, collective nouns such as team and staff may be either singular or plural depending on their use in the sentence. Examples The staff is in a meeting. The staff are in disagreement about the findings. The next concept to review is the concept of nouns. Nouns are names of anything that exists, or that can be conceived, referring to a person, place, thing, or idea. They can also be categorized based on the following. 1. The kind of thought or perception they convey, maybe be abstract or concrete. 2. The type of matter they name, like common or proper. 3. The number, be it singular or plural. 4. The quantity or amount they indicate, either collective or mass. 5. The gender, masculine, feminine or neuter. The following are the things to remember, about noun possessives and pluralization. Let's start with possessives. 1. 
an apostrophe is added to form the possessive case of singular and plural nouns ending in s or z, s to those not ending in s or z. To and of phrase is used after nouns not related to people. Examples The tires of the car The surface of the road The roof of the house The leaves of the tree 3. Nouns connected with people and human activity usually take the apostrophe s form examples proper names abraham lincoln's speech personal nouns the girl's dress collective nouns the team's success relating to human activity the body's ability institution the museum's members 4 many phrases of time take the apostrophe s form examples a month's pay two weeks vacation a year's work season's greetings five certain idioms take the apostrophe s form examples our money's worth an arm's length six higher animals can take the apostrophe s form examples a dog's life the kittens cry a bird's nest the horse's mane. 7. Double possessives using both of and the apostrophe, s form are common with proper nouns when reference is definite and personal. Examples. A novel of Conrad's. A painting of Picasso's. Next is for pluralization. 8. The plural of most nouns are generally formed by adding final, s when the singular form can be pronounced without adding a syllable, or a final, es, if the singular form ends in s, ch, z, and x that cannot unite with s to form one syllable. 9. Plurals of figures, signs, and letters used as words add apostrophe, s. 10. There are nouns generally used in the singular and therefore require a singular verb. Among these are beard, food, fish, fruit, grass, hair. 11. The following nouns do not have their plural form, baggage, chalk, furniture, jewelry, scenery, information, machinery, pottery. 12. The following nouns are always plural, trousers, binoculars, scissors, means, refreshments, forceps, pliers and falls. 13. Nouns ending in ICS are singular when they denote scientific subjects such as physics, mathematics, linguistics and among others. 14 nouns ending in ICS are plural when they denote activities or qualities such as acoustics, acrobatics, athletics. 15. Hyphenated nouns or compound nouns usually attach s to the element that is actually being pluralized, mothers-in-law, officers in charge, editors-in-chief, mayors-elect. 16. Foreign plural. Foreign noun plural form. Larva larvae. Criterion criteria. Vertebra vertebrae. Phenomenon phenomena. Alumnus alumni. Automaton automata. Bacillus bacilli. Cactus cacti slash cactuses. Tempo tempi. Focus foci. Next is the order of determiners in a noun phrase. The order is as follows, predeterminer, core determiner, post determiner, adjective, and then noun. Examples of predeterminers are all, both, have, double. Core determiners include a articles, a slash in, the, b possessive adjectives, his, her, its, my, are, their, your. See possessive of names, example. John's. D demonstratives, this, that, these, those. E indefinite another, any slash each, either, enough, much, neither, no, some, what, which, whose. Examples of post determiners are. Cardinal numbers, 1, 2, 3. Ordinal numbers first, second, third, last, every, few, less, 
little, many, a, more, most, other, same, several, single, such, a. And then adjectives and nouns like red school, old college, new dormitory, big house, high garden, tall fence, thick garage, Japanese wool, silk and silk, woolen, steel. Unlike the articles, possessives, and demonstratives, the indefinite forms are not preceded by predeterminers. Next is pronouns. Pronouns are words that stand for a noun or noun phrase. For singular pronouns. Subject pronoun. Object pronoun. Possessive pronoun. For example, I, me, mine, you, you, your, she, her, hers, he, him, his, it, it, its. For plural, here are the examples. Subject pronoun. Object pronoun. Possessive pronoun. We. Us. Ours. You. You. Yours. They. Them. Theirs. The noun being referred back to is called the antecedent. Example. I read a book. It was good. The pronoun it refers to the antecedent noun book. Possessive pronouns are not followed immediately by a noun, they stand alone. Example. That book is hers. Possessive pronouns do not take apostrophes. Possessive determiners are followed immediately by a noun, they do not stand alone. Example. Her book is here. It has no apostrophe when used as a possessive determiner. Example. A bird uses its wings to fly. Its is a contraction of it is or it has. Fifth is adjectives. A. Degrees of adjectives. Only the comparative and superlative adjectives show degrees. We use the comparative for comparing two entities, and the superlative for comparing three or more entities. For example, Liza is a rich woman, but Maymay is richer than Liza, and Nadine is the richest woman in town. More examples are Positive Comparative Superlative Rich Richer Richest Lovely Lovelier Loveliest Beautiful More beautiful Most beautiful Certain adjectives have irregular forms in the comparative and superlative degrees. Let's study the below examples. Irregular. Comparative. Superlative. Good. Better. Best. Bad. Worse. Worst. Little. Less. Least. Much. Many. More. Most. Far. Further. Furthest. Adjectives that do not admit comparative degree, according to Brian Gamer. Absolute, impossible, principle, adequate, inevitable, stationary, chief, irrevocable, sufficient, complete, main, unanimous, devoid, manifest, unavoidable, entire, minor, unbroken, fatal, paramount, unique final, perpetual universal, ideal, preferable, whole. Be the order of adjectives in a series. The categories below can be described as follows. Determiners, examples, this, that, these, those, my, mine, your, yours, him, his, her, hers, they, their, or a, and, the. Observation slash opinion, examples, beautiful, interesting, polite, difficult, hardworking. Size, examples, tall, wide, large, high, narrow, thin. Shape, examples, round, rectangular, circular. Age, examples, young, 
old, new, ancient. Color, examples, red, black, pale. Origin, examples, French, American, Canadian. Material, examples, woolen, metallic, wooden. Qualifier, examples, rocking chair, hunting cabin, passenger car. See collective adjectives. When the definite article, the, is combined with an adjective describing a lass or group of people, the resulting phrase can act as a noun, the poor, the rich, the oppressed, the homeless, the lonely, the unlettered, the unwashed, the gathered, the dear departed. Examples The rural poor have been ignored by the media. The rich of Connecticut are responsible. The elderly are beginning to demand their rights. The young at heart are always a joy to be around. E kinds of adjectives. 1. Possessive adjectives, modify a noun by telling whom it belongs to. Answer the question whose. Include his, her, its, my, are, their, and your. Examples. You can share my rice. Have you seen their house? 2. Demonstrative adjectives, include that, these, this, those. Answer the question which used to modify a noun or pronoun. Examples I'm going to open that present. Those socks look warm. Three interrogative adjectives include what and which used in a question. May look like an interrogative pronoun, but it is used differently in the sentence. It is an adjective used to modify a noun or pronoun. Examples What movie do you want to see? Which leaves turn color first? Four indefinite adjectives, an indefinite adjective gives indefinite, or general information. Often, it answers the question how much. Some common indefinite adjectives are all, any, each, every, few, many, and some. Examples Many children like dinosaurs. Did you want some bananas? Another part of speech is the concept of adverbs. Adverbs are modifiers of a verb, an adjective, another adverb, a phrase, or a clause. They indicate manner, time, place, cause, or degree and answers questions such as how, when, where, how much. A. Types of adverbs. 1. Adverbs of manner, provide information on how someone does something. Placed after the verb or entire expression, at the end of the sentence. Examples Jack drives very carefully. Their teacher speaks quickly. Two adverbs of time, provide information on when something happens. Example We'll let you know our decision next week. Three adverbs of frequency, provide information on how often something happens. Placed after the verb or entire expression, at the end of the sentence. Example. They usually get to work at 8 o'clock. 4. Adverbs of degree, provide information concerning how much of something is done. Placed after the verb or entire expression, at the end of the sentence. Examples. 
They like playing golf a lot. She'll attend the meeting as well. 5. Adverbs of comment, provide a comment, or opinion about a situation. Placed at the beginning of a sentence. Examples. Fortunately, there were enough seats left for the concert. Luckily, I was able to come to the presentation. B. Adverb placement. Adverbs of frequency are placed, after the verb to be when used as the main verb of the sentence. Example, Jack is often late for work. Some adverbs of frequency, sometimes, usually, normally, are also placed at the beginning of the sentence for emphasis. Adverbs can also modify an adjective. In this case, the adverb is placed before the adjective. Examples. She is extremely happy. They are absolutely sure. Do not use very with adjectives, that express an increased quality of a basic adjective. Example. Good, fantastic. Adverbs of frequency, always, never, sometimes, usually come before the main verb. Examples. He is often late for class. Do you always eat in a restaurant? They don't usually travel on Fridays. Adverbs of frequency expressing infrequency, are not usually used in the negative or question form. Never, seldom, rarely, and other adverbs of frequency, with a negative sense are not usually used in the question form. When using adverbs of frequency in the negative form, put the adverb before the main verb. Example. Does she rarely eat fish? Adverbs of frequency are often placed at the beginning of a sentence. Example. Sometimes, he likes to go to museums. Adverbs of frequency follow, come after dash, the verb to be. Example. He is sometimes late for work. When an adverb modifies an adjective, there is no need to join the two with a hyphen. Example. Thomas was a highly respected member of the team. The example, Thomas was a highly respected member of the team, is, incorrect. With words like well and fast, which are both adjectives and adverbs, a hyphen can be used to avoid ambiguity. Example. We will be visited by a well-known actress. Usual word order when two or more adverbs modify a verb. Manner frequency place time cause slash reason. So far are you following? Let's move on. Next is prepositions. Prepositions show relationships in time and space and relationships between ideas or what we call as logical relationships. Here are the list of prepositions. One dot in, it is used in, months, years, seasons, examples, in December, in 2009, in autumn. It is used in enclosure in a landmark, example, in the box. It is used in special expressions, examples, in the meantime, in addition in contrast. 2. On, it is used in, days of the week and dates, examples, on Wednesday, on the 5th of July. It is used in contact with a surface, examples, on his chest, on the tree. 3. At, it is used in, time, example, at 6 o'clock. It is used in place as a point of orientation, example, at the corner. 4. From, it is used in the separation from a point of orientation, example, away from me. 5. Off, it is used in the separation from contact with a line or surface, example, fell off the stem. 6. Out of, it is used in the separation from inside of a landmark, Example, fish out of water. 7. By, it is used in denoting the idea of connection or nearness. Example, stand by me. 8. With is used for association and slash or accompaniment. Example, dinner with friends. Is used for equal standing or ability. Example, rank with the best. Is used in describing manner. Example, spoke with ease. 9 through, is used for, structures space as a tunnel or channel, example, through the woods. Is used for duration, example, 
through the years. Is used to describe endurance, example, through thick and thin. 10. About, is used for, spatial movement in any direction example, walked about the room. Is used for approximation, example, about 10 miles. Is used for concerning something, example, about the book. 11. Under, is used to describe, at a lower point than a landmark, example, under the mango tree. Is used to describe below, example, under 18. 12. Over, is used to describe at a higher point than the landmark, example, over the fence. 13. Above, is used to denote, higher than, example, above average. 14. Before, is used to denote in front of, example, before us. Is used to denote earlier than, example, before the year ends. 15. Between, is used to denote, at an intermediate point in relation to two entities, example, between you and me. Next to review is the concept of conjunctions and or coordination. The word and, means addition. The word but, shows contrast. Yet, denote, but at the same time. So, means, therefore. For, would mean, because. Or, means, one or the other of two alternatives is true. And, nor, that combines two negative sentences, both of which are true. Correlative conjunctions, are pairs of conjunctions that are used together. For example, both, and, either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also, whether, dot or. Correlative conjunctions must be followed by the same grammatical structures. For example, if you say, either the meat was tough to begin with or overcooked. This is incorrect. The correct form of the sentence would be, either the meat was tough to begin with or it was overcooked. Subordinating conjunctions, connect two complete ideas, by making one of the ideas subordinate, two or less important than the other. Example, he ran steadily as though wolves were after him. He ran steadily is the main idea and the subordinate idea is wolves were after him. The following are the frequently used subordinating conjunctions. After, because, now that, until, although, before, since, when, as, even if, so that, whenever, as if, even though, then, where, as long as, if, though, wherever, as soon as, in order that, till, while, as though, lest, and unless. The next concept is modal. Basic modals, such as can, could, may, might, must, ought to, shall, should, will, would. Phrasal modals, are, be able to, be going to, be supposed to, have to, have got to, used to. Modals do not take a final s, even when the subject is singular. If you say, she can do it, this is a correct sentence. Do not say, she can't do it. Modals are followed by the simple form of the verb. The only exception is ought, which is followed by an infinitive, to and simple form of the verb. Correct, she can do it. Incorrect, she can does it. Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with auxiliaries may and might, their uses and examples in present or future and past tenses. Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with auxiliaries should and ought to, their uses and examples in present or future and past tenses.
Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with auxiliaries be supposed to and must, their uses and examples in present or future and past tenses. Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with auxiliaries WLL and CAN, their uses, and examples in present or future and past tenses. Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with the auxiliary could, its uses and examples in present or future and past tenses. Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with the auxiliary would, its uses and examples in present or future and past tenses. Below is a summary chart of modals and similar expressions with the auxiliaries used to and shall, their uses and examples in present or future and past tenses. Next is the concept of tag questions. A tag question is a question added at the end of a sentence. It aims to seek agreement or to ascertain correctness of information. A tag question may be spoken a. with a rising intonation if the speaker is truly seeking to ascertain that his slash her information, idea, or belief is correct. Example, and lives in an apartment, doesn't she? B with a falling intonation if the speaker is expressing an idea with which s slash he is almost certain the listener will agree. Example, it's a nice day today, isn't it? Below are illustrative examples. Affirmative sentence plus a negative tag will yield to an affirmative answer expected. Such as, Beth is here, isn't she? Yes, she is. You like coffee, don't you? Yes, I do. They have left, haven't they? Yes, they have. Negative sentence plus an affirmative tag will yield to a negative answer expected, such as Beth isn't here, is she? No, she isn't. You don't like coffee, do you? No, I don't. They haven't left, have they? No, they haven't. Basic verb forms used in conditional sentences. Below table illustrates a situation, its if clause, result clause, and examples. The situations are True in the present or future, untrue in the present or future true in the past. Let us move on to English phonology. Effective oral discourse means being able to use grammatical structures accurately, having the ability to express ideas, messages, and intentions meaningfully, and observing rules of use appropriately when interacting with others in various social contexts. 
In other words, a competent speaker has good pronunciation and correct intonation, forms grammatical sentences, and uses language appropriately when communicating with others. This is the diagram of the speech mechanism. The speech mechanism. The speech producing mechanism or vocal apparatus consists of the following parts as shown in the figure. The resonators or resonating cavities, the pharynx or pharyngeal cavity, the nasal cavity, and the oral cavity. These cavities serve as the passage of the moving stream of air. The pharyngeal cavity is a space formed by the root of the tongue and the walls of the throat. The articulators, lower lip, lower teeth, the tongue, and its parts, the tongue apex is made up of the tongue tip and blade, the front of the tongue, and the back of the tongue or dorsum, as well as the soft palate or velum with its pear-shaped appendage called the uvula. Articulators are movable parts. The important points of articulation are the upper lip, the upper teeth, the alveolar ridge, the gum behind the upper teeth, the hard palate, the bony roof of the mouth, and again, the velum. Except for the velum, these parts are non-movable. They are the parts of the speech apparatus near which or against which the articulators are placed in the production of the various speech sounds. The vocal cords or bands. They are two short bands of elastic flesh and muscle located inside the larynx, Adam's apple. The opening between them is called the glottis. The glottis may be opened so as to cause no obstruction in the passage of air as in normal breathing, completely closed, or partially closed. Speech sounds produced with an open glottis are said to be voiceless. When the vocal bands are brought so close together then the air passing through causes the glottis to vibrate, the speech sounds produced are said to be voiced. When the vocal bands are pressed together so tightly as to resist considerable air pressure from the lungs, the sound produced is a glottal stop. A. The phoneme. The phoneme is a minimal significant or contrastive unit in a language. This speech sound signals a difference in meaning, such as slash p slash, slash b slash, and slash f slash as in pen, van, and fan. Note that a phoneme is enclosed in slants. A phoneme may be pronounced in different ways, depending on its position in the utterance, and still remains the same phoneme. These variations in pronunciation, called allophones, are enclosed in square brackets. For example, the phoneme slash p slash is pronounced differently in the following words, pin, spin, nip. It is aspirated in pin, un is pirated in spin, and unreleased in nip. Be the vowel phonemes of English. The following statements show the nature of vowels. 1. Vowels are oral sounds. 2. Vowels are voiced. 3. Vowels are characterized by a free flow of air through the oral cavity. Using Triger and Smith and the IPA transcription systems, the following are the simple and complex vowels of English with their corresponding keywords. Check below. See the consonant phonemes of English. The first set of consonant sounds in English are the stop slash p, b, t, d, k, g. They are produced by a stoppage of air. The sounds slash p, t, k slash are voiceless because the vocal cords do not vibrate. On the other hand, slash b, d, g slash are voiced. The slash p, t, K slash sounds are aspirated when they occur initially in a stressed syllable. For example, 
the slash t slash sound in the words 10 and a tent are aspirated or produced with an accompanying puff of air. The sound m in cat and recount are likewise aspirated. The same is true with the slash p slash sound in pen and append. The second set of sounds are the fricatives. See examples. They are produced by an obstruction of the air stream causing audible friction. Further, English has two affricates as indicated, three nasals, a lateral, a retroflex and two semivowels. The retroflex and the semivowels are sometimes referred to as glides. The following table shows the consonant sounds of English in two transcription systems. Awareness of certain sounds are crucial in pronouncing noun plurals, and noun possessives as well as the third person singular inflection of regular verbs. Similarly, it is also significant in pronouncing the regular simple past inflection. To illustrate, noun plurals are spelled as s or es. This plural inflection can be pronounced in three different ways. Examples, slash s slash, slash z slash, or slash ez slash as shown below. The pronunciation rules defined for the plural above also apply to noun, possessives and third person singular forms of regular verbs. Likewise, the regular simple past tense inflection ed has three variants. Namely, check the following. E supersegmental phonemes and prosodic patterns in English. Pronouncing consonant and vowel sounds correctly in an utterance is not enough. As consequential are other phonemic phenomena labeled as supersegmentals, which contribute to a meaningful interpretation of what is being said. These phonemes consist of stress, pitch, and juncture. A combination of them makes up the prosodic patterns of spoken language or oral discourse. 1. Stress Stress refers to the degree of prominence a syllable has. In the word forgive, the syllable gives sounds more prominent than four. There may be as many degrees of stress as there are syllables, but some of the differences may be imperceptible. For individual words, three stress phonemes are significant. These are, primary stress, mid-stress, and weak stress, usually not indicated. The word legendary illustrate all these stress. In words of more than one syllable, there will be one syllable which is more heavily stressed than the others. This syllable carries the primary stress, for examples, the words remedy, develop, understand. In some longer words, other syllables may carry secondary stress, example is the word legendary. The most important thing is to recognize where the primary stress is. The assignment of primary stress can change between words derived from the same base such as photograph, photographer, photographic. In word groups and sentences, there are four degrees of stress, primary stress, secondary stress, tertiary stress and weak stress, usually not indicated. Note the words intellectual and curiosity. In isolation each word gets a primary stress, however, when put together to form the phrase intellectual curiosity, the primary stress in one is reduced to secondary stress. A word group carries only one primary stress. Note that the last content word generally is assigned the primary stress in a phrase or sentence unless contrastive meaning is desired in which case there is a shift of stress, such as a black dog. A black dog, not white or brown.
2. Grammatical stress patterns. Grammatical patterns are accompanied by regular stress patterns. Sometimes such stress patterns are the sole means of differentiating one grammatical pattern, with its concomitant meaning, from another. The common ones include compound nouns such as rocking chair, postman, modifier plus noun like blackbird, long hand, verb plus noun object for example, carabaos eat grass, he is watching a movie, and lastly, verb plus adverbial such as this information is not to be handed but my boyfriend called up three pitch levels and terminals although many degrees of pitch are employed in speaking only four levels of relative pitch are used as phonemes these are four extra high three high two normal and one low pitch is relative the normal pitch of every individual speaking voice whatever its actual height some speakers tend to be either high-pitched or low-pitched, is called level 2. From this level, one makes departures either upward, level 3, or downward, level 1. We begin on level 2, our natural normal level, and remain there until we reach the primary stress. Pitches combine into patterns to make meaningful melodies over the whole phrase or sentence, for examples. 231, 233, or 232. Two. In 231, a statement or proposition is being uttered. These melodies have three methods of closure called terminal junctures or simply terminals. As the name suggests, these terminals occur at the end of the sentence. Oftentimes, they are marked with arrows as follows, arrow down for fading terminal, arrow up for rising terminal and arrow right for sustained terminal. The fading terminal as in 231 fading terminal is characterized by a rapid fade away of the voice into silence. It closes a statement. Such as, I'm going to school which is, 231 fading terminal. The rising terminal as in 233 rising terminal is a short, slight rise in the pitch from the last level heard, but it does not go all the way up to the next level. This terminal commonly occurs at the end of a yes no question. For example, are you happy? The sustained terminal as in 232 arrow to the right terminal is characterized by a slight lengthening of the preceding pitch 3 word. For example, the word that gets the primary stress. It may be heard at the end of a long sentence subject. AII of the members of the team look confused. Patterns of pitch, with their accompanying terminals such as 231 fading terminal, 233 rising terminal and 232 suspended terminal are called intonation contours. Four commonly used intonation contours. 231 fading terminal. This contour occurs in 1. Statement or declarative sentence such as we watched a movie. 2. Command like read the announcement. 3. WH or information question, a question that begins with words like who what, where, when, why, which, and how. For example what s your name. 233 rising terminal. This contour commonly occurs at the end of yes no questions. 1. Yes no question in statement form such as he's an actor. 2. Yes no question in question form like are you coming. 3. Initial grammatical unit, phrase, clause, or sentence segment, for example. If you'll notice. And last we have the 232 suspended terminal. This contour signals incompleteness. 1. Initial grammatical unit, an alternate for 233 terminal, such as, if you'll notice. 2. Statement to indicate the speaker has more to say, often the word following this contour is but. For instance, she's a bright girl but. There are three elements in oral communication, the speaker, the message, and the audience. The purpose of the speaker's message must be appropriate to the occasion and the intended audience. Oral communication process may be illustrated as one way or two way as shown below. In one way communication, examples are public speech, storytelling, and announcement. 
primarily because it involves only a one-way process from speaker and message to an audience. Whereas in two-way communication, such as conversation, discussion, and interview, aside from the speaker and message to an audience, there will be a feedbacking process to the speaker. A group communication. The four criteria that determine a small group according to Morila, Spitzberg, and Barge, in 2007. 1. Includes three or more people. 2. Includes shared perception. 3. Emphasizes interdependence. 4. Requires communication. B. Public speaking as communication according to O'Hare, Stewart, and Rubinstein, in 2001. In public speaking, a speaker delivers a message with a specific purpose to an audience of people, who are present during the delivery of the speech. Public speaking always includes a speaker, who has a reason for speaking, an audience that gives the speaker its attention, and a message that is meant to accomplish a specific purpose. In public speaking as communication, there are special speaker considerations. First is context. The speech context includes anything that influences the speaker, the audience, the speech, the occasion, or the situation. Second consideration are the goals. A clearly defined goal is a prerequisite for an effective speech. What is it that you want the audience to learn or do or believe as a result of your speech? How much ground do you want to cover? What do you personally want to achieve by delivering the speech? And lastly is outcome. A speech is not truly complete, until its effects have been assessed, and you decide whether you have accomplished what you set out to do. Usually this assessment is informal, as in listening to audience reactions. Constructive feedback is an invaluable tool for self-evaluation and improvement. The following are the types of speeches. 1. An informative speech increases the audience's understanding or awareness by imparting knowledge. It provides audience with new information, new insights, or new ways of thinking about a topic, and introduces new ideas, events, people, places, or things. 2. A persuasive speech attempts to influence the attitudes, beliefs, values, and acts of others. It limits alternatives, seeks a response, and respects audience choices. 3. Special Occasion Speeches Examples of special occasion speeches include, speech of introduction prepares or warms up the audience toward the speaker. It aims to motivate audience members to listen to what he or she has to say. Speech of acceptance aims to express gratitude for the honor bestowed on the speaker, eulogies and tributes celebrate and commemorate the life the deceased while consoling those who have been left behind and speech of inspiration aims to uplift the member of the audience and to help them see things in a positive light. For language functions and useful expressions, the following are the expressions of advice as illustrated by Tanka and Baker, 2007 page 59. Check the following examples that indicate asking, giving, accepting, and rejecting. For language functions and useful expressions, the following are examples of asking for a favor and responding, and asking for directions and giving of directions, as illustrated by Tanka and Baker, 2007 pages 107 and 77. For language functions and useful expressions, the following are examples of expressing agreements and expressing disagreements, as illustrated by Hartman and Blass, 
2005 page 45. For language functions and useful expressions, the following are examples of expressions for telephone conversations, as illustrated by Hartman and Blass, 2000 pages 211 and 213. Answering the phone, finding out who is calling, taking a phone message and asking for clarifications. For language functions and useful expressions, the following are examples of turn-taking and turn-giving expressions. It includes the following. Introducing the topic. Bringing in other people. Keeping the discussion moving. Giving an opinion. Getting further information. Interrupting. Seeking clarification and. Closing the discussion. End of lecture. Let's call it a day. You may now check the link in the description section of this video, to assess yourself in the simulated drills and practice test sets. After which, you may then proceed to the next lecture video on Philippine literature. Thank you so much for connecting. All the best.